Welcome to the show. This is everything you need to know about product marketing interviews. I am your host, Kenton Cavestu. I am the founder of Rocket Blocks, an online platform that helps candidates prepare for interviews, including product marketing, of course. And today, my guest is Shar Patel. She is the head of product marketing at Hopin which sounds like a very cool virtual events based focused company previously at Salesforce and Box as well. So really excited to have you on the show and chat about product marketing interviews. So thank you for joining. Yeah, excited to be here. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're all focused on interviews today and product marketing interviews specifically. And I just want to start by, let's just jump into it. And tell me a little bit about when you are sitting down and you're interviewing candidates. And I understand you have been in the process of sort of building up a product marketing team at Hopin right now. So I imagine you've been doing a lot of this, but what are your favorite questions to ask in product marketing interviews and why? For sure. So this is very top of mind right now. I think this week alone, I'm close to doing 10 different interviews. So <laughs> I'm very, very excited to be talking about this, but a couple of my favorite questions. First, I like to start off with actually asking the candidate how they define product marketing, because that will tell us a lot about where their strengths are, what their experience doing product marketing is as well. So kind of how they interpret that question and how they develop an answer is good insight into what their experience has been as a product marketer and where you as a hiring manager can kind of double click into. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And are there like for you with that particular question, if are there certain things that they miss or don't touch on them in the definition, is that like a big red flag or are there certain on the flip side that they're just like, Hey, if they check these three boxes, that's sort of good enough to me. And then I'll dive in and ask a little more detail, or is it more just like, just see how they frame things and use that as a jumping off point? Yeah, it's kind of the latter. You can always double click into things if they don't touch on enablement or launches. You can always double click into that later in the interview, but I just want to see kind of a gut reaction for how mm -hmm. they define it, because I think that is a good transparent way to see how the experience that they've had and how that translates into their answer. Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. Other questions you like, other favorites, or is that sort of the, the key favorite that jumps out at you? That's the one I like to start with. And then the one that I actually typically end on is what is their most out of box or creative launch activity that they've done for a product launch or a solution launch? Because I think a lot of times product launches can get very transactional and you have a checklist of all the things that you need to do. So I like to kind of understand, especially in a virtual world where you're not in the office, understanding kind of what they've done as a creative activity for a launch. Interesting. That's a fun question. What are some of the most compelling or interesting examples you've heard to that? Yeah. Anytime you can leverage gamification, especially for internal enablement with your sales team or with your go-to-market team, mm -hmm. I love those sort of answers and thinking about creative ways of creating Kahoot quizzes or putting together different swag bags for people who win and making it more of a gamified fun process for the sales team is a, a big plus for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gamifying things like that. I could see working well in a relevant gamifying topic. I saw that the state of Ohio is going to do a lottery for people that have been, I think it's either fully vaccinated or get at least their first shot. You get automatically entered into a lottery to win a uh, million dollars. It works, whatever it takes. I was like, I think that's great. Cool. Okay. Tell me about, so not necessarily with those questions, although you, you can use those questions as, as fodder for this as well. But when you think about candidates going through the product marketing interview process, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see? Like, are there common things that show up that various candidates sort of struggle with or things that people should be aware of if they're going to go through interviews today? Yeah, great question. I think the first is trying to showcase everything in an interview in terms of your product marketing skills, right? Like mm. we all know that product marketers have to do so many different things from market research to positioning, to messaging, to enablement, competitive. There's a ton of different things that you're responsible for, but when you have a job description, there are certain things that the job description is really focused on. So kind of tailoring your especially the introduction of your interview to those specific skills is really important. Otherwise, you're just kind of blabbering all of the different skills that you have, and it's overwhelming for both the hiring manager and it doesn't really set up the rest of the, the interview for success either. So I think that's one thing. Yeah, like no spray and pray. Here's my 50 skills that I'll bring to the table. 
Right. Get focused and get focused based on what the job description is asking for. So that's the first thing. The second thing is around the challenge portion of your interview process, which for most PMM interviews, you always have some sort of presentation or challenge step. So having a very polished deck, both in terms and presentation, both in terms of your delivery and visually is Mm -hmm. really crucial. It's interesting because there are so many people across orgs that just think product marketing are, they're creating your presentations and they're creating your decks and that's what you go to them for. And that's so far from the truth, but (laughs) there is some element of like a pride thing to that, where we do create really compelling presentations. So being able to showcase that during your interview as well is a really important thing. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. And when you say the word challenge, do you mean, is that synonymous with, Hey, here's sort of like a case question or some prompt we want you to do some homework and come back to us then you're exactly talking. yeah right. like a presentation and you're given a homework assignment or a case study to yeah. present back to the panel yeah and those feel from all the product marketers i've spoken with aside from a handful of the big tech companies and it sounds like some of them even i spoke with a facebook product marketer that says she always has a challenge yeah but i don't think google like forces you to do it but like it sounds like most other companies are giving you some sort of homework assignment I think so. From what we've seen, or at least I've seen at Salesforce, it was a big part of the interview process as well. And the good part with that is you're usually involving stakeholders from other teams. So I'll bring in someone from sales, someone from product, someone from the other marketing teams to get a really good kind of cross-functional approach yeah. to that. Tell me a little more about the the visual aspect you mentioned, because my, my past before running Rocketblocks is basically as a product manager and a, a brief stint as a consultant as well. So I've had a decent amount of time building some decks. <laughs> And from my experience, the visual aspect sometimes does take a while to get right, to get a deck to visually pop on top of just having sort of the right content. I'm curious what your thoughts around for an interview process where it's like, you're doing a lot of work sort of outside. Mm -hmm. Is there any tips you have for like how to balance it? When's like too much time focused on visual stuff versus, because it is to like in the product marketing realm, I think obviously the visual quality is going to be important on the job. So makes sense that you would want to assess that, but just curious how you think about balancing that. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we're not designers. So the expectation isn't to have like a perfectly designed deck. It's more so the format of the deck and making sure that it's not super text heavy and making sure that there's a clear kind of flow to your presentation as well. And then doing little things like understanding what the iconography or the brand colors of the company you're interviewing for are and bringing some of that into the presentation as well. There's little things you can do to just polish it up and and show that you've taken that extra step. Yeah. (laughs) So like attention to detail in terms of using the brand colors. I like that. And that's not a time consuming thing. That's just thinking about that and doing that. It's interesting. The other stuff you mentioned that is important with the deck and it's the storytelling arc or sort of not super text heavy, right? Again, you're hinting at a little bit of like the less is more. Yeah. And I think it just goes back to, as a product marketer, your sole job really is a storyteller and it's to tell a story in a compelling way. So you have to be able to do that during your presentation as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Well, this bleeds nicely into the next question I was going to ask, which is when you are sitting down and, and running an interview and just like an interview process where you're having probably some salespeople meet with a candidate, maybe other marketers, maybe some customer success ops, et cetera. What's like the set of skills you're trying to suss out. You're asking a whole range of questions. You're putting them through this challenge. If you had to take a step back and say, what three to four top skills are we really trying to see if candidate X, you know, Sally or Jim has, what would you say those are? Yeah. So storytelling, we just chatted about that a little bit, but that's certainly one of them. You have to be able to convince all stakeholders of the story that you're trying to tell, but some other just really table stakes skills are cross-functional collaboration and then excellent communication as well. And that's true across PMMs, across industries, segments, geographies, whatever the case is. So that's important for any organization. And then as you get more senior in your role and as you're starting to interview people managers or senior PMMs as well, another really important skills is the ability to influence your key stakeholders. Mm. So oftentimes it's hard for me to think of a more cross-functional role than PMM. And 
so much of our job is influencing your VP of sales, your VP of product, your VP of demand gen on certain things. So understanding what kind of criteria they use to help influence, whether that's data reports, market research, or customer interviews, understanding what's been successful for them. Yeah, makes sense. And so th those skill sets, like influencing, communication, cross-functional collaboration, storytelling, of course, makes complete sense. Good list. Some of the, you know, like influencing others, for example, like how do you think about tests? Like how does that get tested or how do you try and assess that in an interview scenario? Because it's super important, but I'm curious, I feel like everyone's got sort of a different approach for testing that. Yeah. It's another question that I typically ask is talk to me about a time where you and a product manager differed on a strategy for launch or something. You're, it's the same thing with sales as well as they were asking for one thing, but it didn't make sense from a product marketing strategy as well. So how they resolve that, not necessarily conflict, but how they resolve that disagreement in strategy and what tactics they use to do that in every single PMM can tell you at least five <laughs> examples of that, but it's really how they thought about it and how they kind of resolved it with that other member is important. Got it. Okay. So behavioral questions that get in situations where you had to do some influencing in the past, tell me the mechanics of what happened. Give me the details. Show me how you successfully navigated that. Yeah. And focusing on the specific tactics they used to help influence as well. And maybe it didn't it's totally fine if it didn't work either, but understanding the learnings from that and why it didn't work and what they would do differently next time. Yeah. Awesome. Makes sense. And how about just going back to the first thing you mentioned on the storytelling, is it possible to break down storytelling a little more or when you're thinking if someone's telling a story, or is he or she doing a good job? What signals or traits are you looking for within them? What makes someone a good storyteller? Yeah, there's a lot of things. One, it's just delivery. How are you delivering this? Are you, your tone of voice? Are you engaging? Am I engaged? Do I want to keep listening to your story? But then I think it's back to the basics of life. Is there a introduction to the problem that you're trying to solve? Is there a hero, which should be your product? Is there a <laughs> climax to the story as well? Yeah. I and mean, then what's your conclusion? It's like the very basic kind of arcs of a storytelling and being able to kind of depict that in your presentation is. Yeah. So going back to a little bit of, Hey, this is a story. It's a sort of creative thing. You're telling a creative endeavor, but there is a structure. And I think the other thing you pointed out, which I do think is true is like the energy you have some sort of, I don't want to say it has, I assume it's, you're not saying it has to be high level, but some sort of like authentic or engaging way of communicating it. That sort of brings the other person into what you're talking about. I think so. I think there's definitely a level of charisma that makes a successful PMM and being a really great way to showcase that is during your presentation. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Makes sense. Awesome. Let's move on to the next question, which is if you are an aspiring product marketer, so you're looking to break into this field for the first time, maybe you've done uh, a different type of marketing role, or maybe you're just coming from a different function, sales or ops or maybe totally different industry. Maybe you were a banker and you've decided you're sick of doing that. What specific tips would you have for someone that's trying to break in for the first time? Yeah, I love this question because we talked about this, but I think product marketing encompasses so many different skills that you can get from finance, that you can get from customer success. If you were a PM before and you want to go into PMM. So it encompasses so many different skills that if you're trying to break into product marketing for the first time, focus on what your superpowers are based on your past experience. Mm. So maybe you're fantastic at data and analytics and synthesizing data, or maybe you just know the product in and out and you're super technical on the product. Or from a customer standpoint, you know your customers in and out, you know their personas, you know what they want. So understanding kind of what your own superpowers are based on your past experience and then focusing and doubling down on those in your interview. And a really good, something that I really appreciate that candidates do is when they follow up with pieces of work that showcase those talents. So, hey, my superpower is X and here's a blog post that reinforces that or a public deck I built prior company I was at that reinforces that type of thing. Exactly. Here's like an incredible training and our onboarding session I did with a customer where it really just clicked for them. There's a lot of different ways you could do it. And that's what I kind of love about PMM is people break into this profession from so many different angles and you, you can be good at it in a lot of different ways, which I enjoy. 
Yeah, I completely agree with that. And it's one of the things that makes it a very compelling, like the cross-functional nature of it and the fact that there are so many disparate hats in a sense that you have to wear to succeed at the job and you can sort of mix and match and everyone indexes differently on them. But it's very similar to product management in that way as well. And similar to you, advice I often give to people that are trying to break in is like, look, figure out which of the aspects of product management you are really good at and yeah. can differentiate yourself on. Because no one's going to be great at all of them. But exactly. You know, like some sort of superwoman or super. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. And I like the bit about just like following up and sharing real work examples because nothing sort of brings stuff to life. Like here's, look, I did this. Like <laughs> This is a good illustration of X. I so you can talk a big talk, but if you have to be able to kind of back it up with, with real life examples and anytime a candidate does that, it goes such a long way and, oh, they would be excellent at this role based on the work that I've seen them produce. And that helps a lot. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Awesome. So one last question for you here before we wrap up and the answer to this may have been embedded in some of the stuff you already mentioned. But if you think about a product marketing candidate, they're applying to some of these roles, whether it's a Salesforce or a growing startup like your own hop in, there's a ton of competition these days. A lot of people want to break into tech. A lot of people want to be in product roles like product marketing, et cetera. How do you stand apart from, you could like have a pretty good candidate, pretty good resume, but if there's 10 other people like you going through the funnel, what tips do you have for folks trying to really that extra little bit that's going to help set them apart? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm a big believer of the quote, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. And that's so true for interview processes in general. And especially we've talked about the presentation and challenge round a lot, but that's really your chance to shine to not just your hiring manager, but across the board to other stakeholders as well. And it's being really kind of detail oriented and creative in your approach and making sure that you're going the extra mile to do the research on who's interviewing you, mm. um, what connections you could possibly have, what their interests are, doing your research on recent product launches that the company has done and what went well and taking some of those elements into your presentation as well. So really using that as an opportunity and getting excited about being able to showcase your creativity and your attention to detail is huge and really does set someone apart from the rest. The last thing I'll say, and this is very old school of me and I, people <laughs> may or may not agree, but I think that a follow-up email or thank you email to your interviewees or interviewers goes such a long way. <laughs> I'm yeah. a big proponent of, it's kind of just like your pleases and thanks. Thank you. It goes a long way. And I, I mean, I've hired people who haven't done it, but it sets you apart from other candidates. Yeah. I like all those answers, like showcasing the creativity, the sort of meta point around going the extra mile, like doing research about the company's releases, about who's interviewing you, what potential connect, you know, all those things that give you fodder to sort of talk about. And if you get the right moment, you've done the research and you can drop in a, you know, comment about X or Y and it just demonstrates that goes a long way. And then the thank you notes. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a thank you note hurt. Maybe I can think of like one example. I received one that was a little odd, but I don't think it actually changed the opinion, but I have definitely seen ones that are really good and have made a difference, especially actually like sort of connecting your earlier point around like someone who followed up and said, Hey, we were talking, you know, about X in the interview and I had a great time. And by the way, here's something I did on X in the past, that type of thing. Yeah. And one, yes, it's nice. Fine. That's one thing, but it also just helps you as a candidate stay top of mind to your interviewers. And it can be via email or it can be via LinkedIn or something, but adding one personal line about something, a question that they asked during the interview or LinkedIn connection that you may have, that really does go a long way and helps you stand out uh, and seem kind of going back to that charisma still as well. Right. I think it all ties together. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This has been great. And unless there's any last tidbits or bits of wisdom you want to add, I think we'll wrap it up here. No, I love it. This has been great. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Thanks for joining the show. Thanks. This podcast is produced by Sharebird, the peer mentoring platform for product marketers. It is the place to discover on-demand resources to help you with your product marketing. To view past episodes, go to sharebird.com. And if you're preparing for product marketing interviews, check out Rocketblock's product marketing interview prep tools, the best place to practice PMM interview skills and get live coaching to ace your PMM interviews. Visit us at rocketblocks.me.